Since its very beginning, the Fulham Boys School has had three pillars, faith, boys and enterprise. As you will see in these videos, the Christian ethos of the school, the faith pillar, has many different facets, but at its heart, it is about genuine engagement with the Christian faith across the school so that boys can learn and think and question and come to their own conclusions. So the vision for the Christian ethos when we set the school up was to expose our young men to the Christian faith. So it wasn't that we wanted all, everyone to be nice to each other and kind to each other and we were going to say to everyone to work hard and not to bully because I would argue every school's doing that and if they're not then close them down tomorrow. For us it was really about saying to these young men this is an education built on the Christian faith so what does Jesus Christ say? His claims and then encourage these young men to question it, challenge it, debate it and disagree with it. Um, it certainly wasn't indoctrination or brainwashing. There's no place for that in education. But we did think it was important that our young men understood the Christian perspective on all the things that they would learn in school. I thought I knew what working in a faith school would be like and I had this perception that it would be very about, all about being kind and welcoming. And of course we are those things but there's also so much more to it that I didn't realise and I have realised that it is about teaching the claims of the Bible and exposing boys to that. We just ask them to engage with it and think about it. We're just saying, just listen and have an opinion on it. I think engaging with the Christian ethos, if I have to describe it in one word, has been really easy. Um, I've always felt comfortable, um, especially as a Muslim, I've always felt comfortable um, engaging and asking questions about um, the things I've learned about Christianity and having the opportunity to have really long debates with the chaplain after school at the gate. I think it has been a massive privilege and I think it really shows that this school is not about just learning about the message of the Bible and Christianity but about engaging with it and being able to bring your own thoughts to it. Fulham Boys School has a very strong Christian ethos which I have thoroughly appreciated because it gave me an opportunity you know, to think of these big questions and try to answer them myself which really gave me a platform to understand society around me. And while I may not be Christian, I certainly understand a lot more about it. What we're trying to do with the Sixth Form Christian Ethos programme is we would love all our sixth formers to leave this school having had the opportunity to ask, to think through, to discuss the really big questions of life. I think there's a lot of big questions out there that we sort of sweep under the rug. And I would love to think that any boy who goes through sixth form at FBS will have a different experience. So whether it's, can I believe in life after death? Is there a spiritual realm? Can the Bible be trusted? Did Jesus really exist? Did he even rise from the dead? All of these. I think it would be class if every boy who comes to FBS sixth form has got their teeth into those questions. Whatever opinion they end up coming out the back of it with. They go to university thinking, I've talked about those big issues and I'm ready to engage with them lifelong. I think there's, there's a lot of links between Christian ethos and enterprise. One of the things we're asked to do within the Christian ethos is to think and question uh, the, what is being presented to us. And of course that, that links with the skill of being inquisitive, being curious and looking a little bit further, but also that idea of being a boundary pusher, to always sort of push the boundaries of your own prejudice, to push the boundaries of your own preconceived notions of Christianity and have an honest discussion with people so that's what our plan was. We, we have always encouraged a kind of atmosphere and environment of challenge and debate. Uh, Jesus Christ himself, when he taught, he asked over 300 questions. He wanted people to think about this. And I think it's a reasonable faith and stacks up to the most intellectual and academic rigor and interrogation possible. I think that society should be like that, really. I think we should welcome differences in opinion and and not be scared of it. I think we should um, welcome debate, welcome you know, challenging different opinions and not, being, and not always taking it personally but in, instead engaging with it while always keeping that level of, of respect. Um, and so I think the Christian ethos at this school really it should be taken as an example for, for society really. A lot of this can be summed up in one of the questions that Jesus asked. In Mark chapter 8 in the Gospels, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says to them, who do you say that I am? Who do you think I am? And as boys go through the school, they'll get the opportunity to answer that for themselves, to work it out for themselves. 
And they'll also get the opportunity to be part of a welcoming school community, a, a community that demonstrates the Christian values shown perfectly by Jesus Christ in everything that we do. And as far as uh, parents and pupils and staff and governors who come to the school, join the school, um, who are not Christians, everybody is equally welcome. And so it's great to have so many boys here from other faiths and no faiths. This is for everybody and everyone is welcome, but they know what they're coming to. In the Bible it says, it talks about all humans should be equal. That's why in the school we treat other people with respect, no matter, no matter how different they are. Men or women, black or white, Christians, Muslims, Jewish or atheists, everything is equal. And that the school has a, has a really good attitude on this. Because at the school we talk about the Christian belief that everyone is made in God's image, that is uh, really important when supporting boys with additional learning needs because we know that everyone has value and everyone is loved. All schools care about loving the students, all care about caring for the students, they all care about looking after them pastorally. Um, the difference here is that we base that on the teachings of Jesus Christ. For example, the summer Christian value is thankfulness. We can be thankful for everything that God has given us and everything that the school provides for us. Even in our senior leadership team meetings, we start with talking about what we're thankful for. It's not just a value that we put on a poster, it's something we're really trying to embody as a school. And you see that amongst the staff and it means it's tangible. One of the Christian values is serving others and that's a key part of our enterprise programme. The social enterprise element of enterprise is all about getting out into the community and making it better. We do that through our co-curricular, uh, volunteering programmes where we'll go to uh, local care homes and primary schools and just help people. We also do that through fundraising and charity initiatives within the school. Our main aim with social enterprises is to instill a ambition to make the world better as it says in the school prayer, moulding young people of character that will make a positive difference in our world. Assemblies are only a part of the Christian ethos at FBS, but there are very important parts. Every week, boys will attend a chaplaincy assembly with their house, as well as other assemblies. And over the course of the year, they'll also attend some special services and special events. And in all of those, the Christian message coming from the Bible is central, as is one of our favourite things to do as a school, and that is to sing together. And Jesus is telling a parable, and the father in this story is God. This son did some horrendous things. He wished his dad dead. And when he returns, his dad opens up his arms and embraces him. And for the people in the crowd listening, which group of people do you think can identify with this man? I gave you two groups. Which group can identify with this man? Go on. Like tax yeah, the sinners and tax collectors are thinking, whoa, that, what he did was awful. I think assemblies are something we do brilliantly well at FBS. It's one of our, the unique things is the sense of community we get from sitting in the same room together and engaging with the speaker, whether that be yourself as the chaplain or another member of staff or maybe a local pastor coming in. All boys in assemblies will have the opportunity to hear God's word, the Bible. Um, so we'll have a talk from the Bible, but we try and do it in a way that is interactive. Um, that is engaging and that will look to expose them to the teaching of Christianity. Uh, we'll do that in a number of ways. We'll show them that how the Bible speaks into all situations um, and is relevant today. So we might look at modern news stories. Uh, we might look at famous Christians, whether they be uh, politicians, sports people, uh, famous figures from history um, and how the Bible has impacted them and how the teaching of Jesus impacted them. And we want the boys to uh, think about the things that they hear. So uh, during chaplain's assembly, I remember we went through the book of Mark and as a Christian myself, sometimes I just read the Bible and I just pick out a verse and think, oh, that's a very good verse. But really going in depth inside the book and looking at context, it really broadens people's views, really showing like this links with this and actually it all makes sense and it all pieces together. It's really beneficial for people who maybe do want to understand the Bible, maybe don't at all, but just think, you know what, here's a chance I might take it. And the son says, Dad, I'm so sorry. Uh, and he says, stop. You were lost and you're found. I thought you were dead and you're alive again. 
we're having a massive party. So we won't uh, dumb down what the Bible says, we want the boys to look at and um, have an understanding of the big theological themes of the Bible. So we'll look at uh, creation, uh, sin, eternity, uh, the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, and also themes of grace and salvation as well. And Jesus says, look, whether you're there or whether you're there, the Father comes to you, the gift of his Son, the Lord Jesus, out of love and compassion, and that gift is needed for that person and that person and everyone in between. Yeah, so every year we stop and we reflect on Remembrance Day and you know some students are very personally connected to it, others it's more abstract, but for everybody it's just a chance to be thankful for those that have given their, their lives. And yeah, it's always a very lovely day where a student will play the last post and you know, we'll, have, we'll have the silence, we'll have that time to, to really think and reflect. Within the Christian context, obviously, Jesus sacrificed himself for the sins of the earth. And I think there's a, there's, a, there's a really strong link there between, you know, actually people have come before me and made sacrifices so I can live. I love the carol service because it gives you the true meaning of Christmas and you get to sing carols as a whole community. It's just absolutely amazing. overwhelming and have like a really great atmosphere while we're singing and the singing is just powerful. I think it's absolutely amazing. At some point in assemblies we get to sing all together and it, we, it gives us a feeling of a, a big community. I think when I first stepped into an assembly at Fulham Boys School, um, just that idea of every single student being involved. They're all there, they're all singing together, they're all standing together, they're part of the community. And having been in three different schools in inner London, I've never seen anything like that. And it's something that I still champion as being part of this school. It's been my, that my vision, of course. Mm. How great that are. My favourite assembly hymn has to be Be Down My Vision because it speaks from the heart. My favourite assembly hymn is 10,000 Reasons. It's How Great Thou Art because I like how everyone joins together and sings together. I cast my mind to Calvary. Probably Be Down My Vision. Uh, I like the melody. I think it might be Power of the Cross. Is it really? I think it might be. What's the one they do at the beginning of the FA Cup? Uh, abide with me. I'm going to hear this blessed Lord and my soul because the chorus is extremely triumphant. Be down my vision. Um, how great thou uh, My favourite assembly hymn is 10,000 Reasons and that's because there's 10,000 Reasons why it's my favourite assembly hymn. <laughs> <So bad. laughs> So one of the Christian values is, is obviously your community and during the pandemic holding on to that community was quite difficult uh, but one of the things we did was a weekly podcast. Yeah the podcasts were great, uh, myself and the chaplain Mr Brown would sit down with different members of staff and we'd discuss their favourite Bible verses, uh, the favourite hymns here at Fulham Boys School and also um, what the Bible has to say about some of the issues uh, in the world today. So the podcast I was on, we were discussing the top 10 favourite hymns and we had a laugh, sort of, I was trying to sing a few of them quite badly and going through the, our favourite vocal warm-ups, but also engaging with the message behind the hymns and the sort of theology and some of the history. I learnt loads about you know, some of the history of these different hymns coming from all areas of the world um, and it was a really nice way to keep in touch with people and in touch with the Christian message. CEUs are another important part of the Christian ethos at FBS. They're another explicit opportunity to engage with the Christian faith. But it's not just about assemblies and about CEUs and about form times. It's about the Christian ethos impacting every area of the school. It's about it impacting lessons. Uh, it impacts how we treat each other at break time and lunch time. About how we engage with, with big worldview questions and big life issues in PSHC and RSE. And it's also even about how we think about our well-being as, as staff and teachers. So CU is Christian Union. It's a place where people just come and talk about the Christian faith. There's one for each year group. We just talk and debate and just discuss our views. 
We again go in depth with the Bible and the Christian beliefs. It's not just a place for Christians to talk, it's a place for people who have different faiths or maybe people who don't have a faith or don't have a religion. People just come and compare their views with others and see what the Bible has to say about certain stuff. I think all students should be encouraged to question, they should be encouraged to, to challenge one another, to, but also to understand where religious beliefs come from. And what's amazing about Christian unions is that it's not just the Christians that go. And they feel it's a safe and comfortable place to really say their opinion, to challenge one another, but to leave as really good friends at the same time. Something else that I really like is see you because you get to go there and ask uh, loads of questions and be inquisitive. It's a great place to invite your friends and have a talk and question. It's really welcoming. I remember my first day at CU, really fun, full of laughs. One of the things that struck me when I first arrived at this school was that every single boy has the opportunity and the access to a CU that is just for their year group once a week during a lunchtime. So every boy, if they want, has the opportunity to meet with boys from their year group and discuss the big issues of life through a Christian lens. I think that's a fantastic opportunity. Um, well, I've been going to see you since year seven, um, and it's been really nice to, to uh, go through different books of the Bible, different topics over the last six years with other Christians and people that have been interested in, uh, in Christian things. Um, we've gone through uh, the book of Jonah this year, um, the book of Philippians as well, and it's been nice to really look in detail at the things which have been written in the Bible and pull out important things that we can learn from uh, in our lives in practical ways as well. Um, and it really helps you grow in your, in your Christian faith. One thing that strikes me about the Christian ethos at this school is how it's not just confined to assemblies. It sort of envelops and uh, encircles everything we do at this school. So we think that it's important that um, the Christian faith comes through everything. It's not just assembly, so we do that in the morning and then it's just normal school or a school like any other school. We think that the Christian faith should impact everything. So it's obviously in assemblies, uh, it's how our boys interact with each other at break and lunchtime, but it's also in their subjects. So in every subject in the school, whether that is English or maths or science or PHSCE, whatever it is, the Christian view of that subject will come through. And we think that's very important, so our boys understand what Christianity says about this particular subject and what Jesus Christ had to say about this subject. And they might not agree with it, but we think that perspective is important because, as Winston Churchill said, true genius is the ability to evaluate conflicting and contrasting information. And so we want our boys to know, yes, uh, some people think this, but this is what Christians think about this subject. And then they then can evaluate it and decide what they think. What I find helpful about the way the school does relationships and sex education is that we get to cover important topics such as consent, STIs, pornography and abuse. Uh, however, we also get to cover the Christian's perspective on these issues. The sessions are really important because we're given opportunities to discuss with teachers and our peers what we think about these beliefs. Um, and the school doesn't sort of impose the Christian belief onto us. However, we're always encouraged to challenge, question and think. Um, the sessions are really important as well for me as a Christian because it helps me go into detail about why in the Bible we're instructed to live our lives in a certain way. Um, establishing an English department based on the Christian ethos was definitely something I'd never experienced in a school before. Um, but being able to think about how the Christian ethos links in with the subject and to find organic links with the subject for boys to explore uh, their faith and explore Christian values has been a really exciting and valuable challenge. So for example in year nine when the boys do gothic literature starting off that unit by debating whether a Christian should even study gothic literature uh, and then as we read Frankenstein for them to unpick uh, what Mary Shelley was trying to say about uh, the relationship between science and religion is something that maybe I wouldn't have thought of doing before but in terms of setting up our curriculum has given the boys added opportunities to engage with some really important issues. Yeah, we talk about staff wellbeing a lot at Fulham Boys School and it's been really helpful for me actually to listen to someone talk about the fact that your identity isn't just in your work, you're not your work and we do have to remind ourselves of these key messages. Things like we 
um, can only do so much. We are human, we can't control everything. Someone else is in control. And I think because that's been framed in the context of the teachings of the Bible, even though I'm not a Christian, it just makes a lot of sense. And so for me, it's been a real mindset shift to thinking about my well-being in the context of work. So there are a group of staff who meet on a Thursday morning, a small number of staff who meet together just before school to pray about different things happening in school life. So we will pray about the assemblies and CUs that happen, but we also pray for the school in general. We pray for all the boys, we pray for the school leadership and the general day-to-day -day running of the life of the school. There are also a group of parents who meet every two weeks to pray for the school and they pray for the same things. So overall it's really encouraging just to hear about all the people who are praying for the school.